And here is the writer's almanac for Friday, the 27th of April, 2018. It's the birthday of August Wilson, born Pittsburgh, 1945, son of a German baker, an African-American cleaning woman, grew up in the Hill District of Pittsburgh with his mother, five siblings, in two rooms, no hot water. They all shared the yard out back. His mother, Daisy Wilson, taught the boy to read when he was four, and a year later he got his first library card. He was a bright boy, but he suffered from racism in school, dropped out when he was 15 because a teacher accused him of plagiarizing a paper about Napoleon because she didn't think a black student could have written anything so good. So he taught himself at the library. He read Richard Wright, Langston Hughes, Ralph Allison, joined the army, started writing poetry. When he was 20, his father died, and he dropped his father's name, Kittle, and took his mother's name, Wilson. And he and a friend started a theater company in the Hill District, where he grew up, staged his first play in 1973. When he was 33, August Wilson moved to St. Paul, Minnesota. He took a job at the Science Museum, writing scripts, adapting Native American stories. Sent a play to the Playwright Center in Minneapolis. He won a Jerome Fellowship. His play Jitney was produced, set in the Hill District in the 1970s. And then came Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, set in the 20s. Fences, set in the 60s. Joe Turner's Come and Gone, set in 1911. August Wilson set out to chronicle African-American experience through the 20th century, decade by decade. And his final play in his 10-part Pittsburgh cycle was Radio Golf, which is set in the 90s. It premiered in 2005, and Wilson died of liver cancer six months later. August Wilson said, My greatest influence has been the blues, and that's a literary influence, because I think the blues is the best literature that we as black Americans have. Blues is the bedrock of everything I do. If all this were to disappear off the face of the earth, and some people two million years from now would dig out this civilization and come across some blues records, they would be able to piece together who these people were, what they thought about, what their ideas and attitudes toward pleasure and pain were, all of that, all the components of culture. And it's the birthday of the author of the Madeline books, Ludwig Bemelmans, born in the Tyrol, Austria, 1898, came to New York when he was 16, worked at a series of hotels, started his own restaurant, which became successful. And then a friend of his, who was in publishing, saw Bemelman's drawings on the walls of his apartment, suggested he write a children's book, and that was Madeline. Ludwig Bemelman's, who said, It is always wonderful when something altogether wrong ends right without the help of religion or the police. Here's a poem for today by Mary Oliver, First Yoga Lesson. Be a lotus in the pond, she said, opening slowly, no single energy tugging against another, but peacefully altogether. I couldn't even touch my toes. Feel your quadriceps stretching, she asked. Well, something was certainly stretching. Standing impressively upright, she raised one leg and placed it against the other, then lifted her arms and shook her hands like leaves. Be a tree, she said. I lay on the floor, exhausted. But to be a lotus in the pond, opening slowly and very slowly rising, that I could do. Mary Oliver's poem, First Yoga Lesson from Blue Horses, published by Penguin, and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac, supported by Lumosity.com, personalized brain training developed by neuroscientists to challenge memory and problem-solving through online games, Lumosity.com. Produced by Joy Biles, assisted by Kathy Roach, be well, do good work, and keep in touch.